Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll create two responsive card layouts with CSS Flexbox. To set up this example I've created header, main and footer elements here inside my body tags. I've then created a basic three row layout by setting the body element to display flex changing the flex direction to column and giving it a min height of 100 VH. I've then applied some basic styling to the header and footer and expanded the height of the main element by setting its flex value to 1. I've also used comments to create dividers in my CSS for the different sections of my page as well as storing the hex codes for the colors that I'll use in this design. To get started with our first card layout, I'm going to create a section element inside the main element here with a class of CTA section. CTA stands for call to action as we're going to create a simple call to action card layout here. Over in my CSS, I'll target the CTA section class here in my CTA section divider and give it a background color with a value of light gray which is stored here in my hex codes. Next I'll give it some padding of 3 rem on the top and bottom and 1 rem on the left and right. Inside the CTA section element in my HTML I'm going to create a div with a class of cards container. While the CTA section is full width, our cards container div will be narrower so that our card layout doesn't extend to the left and right edges of the page. In the CSS, let's give this cards container class a max width of 1000 pixels and center it horizontally by setting its margin to zero auto. Now that we've set up our cards container div, let's move on to creating our first card. Inside the cards container, we'll create a new div and give it two classes. The first class is card, which will be used for all of the cards on our page. The second class is CTA card, which is only for the cards within our CTA section. For this simple call to action card, I'm going to use an h3 tag to create a heading with some dummy text of card title. Next, I'll create a paragraph and use the dummy text. This paragraph describes the product or service. It should occupy a few lines inside the card. There we go. Finally, I'm going to add in an anchor element which will turn into a button and give it an href value of the pound or hash symbol and insert the text of learn more. That's the basic structure of our first card completed. We've got a heading, a paragraph and a call to action link or button. If we look in the browser, we'll see that our card currently looks nothing like a card. So let's fix that. Let's target our card class here in the CSS and give it a width of 300 pixels. Padding of 2 rem on the top and bottom and 1 rem on the left and right and a border, whoops, a border radius of 2 pixels just to round off the corners slightly. We'll also give this a box shadow value of 1 pixel, 1 pixel, 15 pixels and then I'm going to use an RGBA value of 0, 0, 0 which is black and set its opacity or alpha to 0 0.2. This gives a fairly subtle shadow to our card which just helps to separate it slightly from the rest of the page. 
Next, I'm going to turn our card into a flex container by setting its display to flex. I'm also going to change the flex direction to column and I'm going to center everything using align items center. Below this, I'm going to target our card's H3 element by first targeting the card class, followed by a space, and then the H3 element that belongs to the card class. And I'm going to give it a margin bottom of one rem, just to separate it from everything below it. Next, I'm going to target our CTA card class, which I'm going to do down here in the CTA section divider in my CSS. So CTA card. And I'm going to give this a background color of white. Finally, I'm going to style our call to action button. First, I'm going to give this anchor element a class of CTA-BTN or CTA button and then target this class here in our CSS. I'm going to give this a background color of blue which is my primary color here in my hex codes. Set the text color to white and then also remove the default text underline, which is given to our links by default, using the text decoration value of none. I'm also gonna make the text bold by setting its font weight to 700. Next, I'll give the button a border radius of two pixels, again, just to round the edges slightly. Some padding of 0.5 rem, on the top and bottom and one rem on the left and right and then I'm going to set its width to max content. To create some separation between the button and the paragraph above I'm going to give it a margin top of one rem. As we can see our card now looks a lot more like a card. I just like to affect the hover state of our button, so when we hover over it at the moment, nothing changes. So I'm going to target its class of CTA BTN and then use the hover pseudo selector to affect its hover state. And inside this rule, I'm going to change the background color to use my light primary color, which is a lighter shade of blue. Let's take a quick look in the browser. As we can see, as we hover over our button, it now changes to this lighter shade of blue. But at the moment, the change in hover state is a little abrupt. It happens instantly. So I'm gonna smooth this out slightly by using the transition property on the original CTA button class, not on the hover state. So here on the original, let's use the transition property. And I want to affect the background color transition and give it a value of 0.3 seconds. Now, when we hover over the button, its background color changes in 0.3 seconds instead of instantly, making the transition a little bit smoother. I'd also like the whole card itself to be affected slightly when we hover over it, so I'm going to adjust its hover state as well. Back up in our card elements section, Underneath the original card class, I'm going to target the card again and use the hover pseudo selector. This time I'm going to apply a transform property and give it a value of translate y minus 2 pixels. Now, when we hover over our card, it shifts upwards by 2 pixels, making it ever so slightly interactive. Again, to smooth out this effect, I'm going to apply a transition property to not the hover state, but the original card class. So transition, and I'm affecting the transform property here in my transition, and I'll give this a value of 0.3 seconds as well. As we can see, our hover transition is now smoother, and although very basic, our first card layout is now complete. Let's now move on to laying out multiple cards using CSS Flexbox. To begin with, 
I'm simply going to copy our card div here and paste it below two more times so we have a total of three cards. If we look in the browser we can see our three cards but we can see that their layout is not ideal. To fix this I'm going to turn the cards container which is the parent of our cards into a flex container by setting its display property to flex. As we can see our cards are now laid out side by side in the default row flex direction. Next I want to centralize them in the container by setting justify content on the container itself to center and create some separation between the cards by giving the container a gap value of 30 pixels. Our cards are now centered and the layout looks much better. The only issue we have now is that the layout is not responsive. As I reduce the width of the browser window, the cards shrink down in size and become very cramped and squashed together. To fix this and make our layout mobile responsive, we need to add only a single line of code. All we need to do is allow our cards to wrap below onto new rows by setting the flex wrap value to wrap on our cards container. Flex wrap wrap. Because all of our cards have an absolute width of 300 pixels and are now allowed to wrap below onto a new row, when the width of the parent container becomes too narrow to contain them all along a single row, rather than shrinking in size, they now begin to wrap down onto new rows below. As we can see, the third card wraps below first, followed by the second card which eventually creates a single column on small screen sizes. No matter what screen size our page is displayed on, and no matter how many cards we put into our layout, they'll always be a maximum of 300 pixels wide and will always wrap down below. If the screen width did drop below 300 pixels, the cards would still be able to shrink down in size. That's everything taken care of for our first card layout, so now I'm going to go through one more quick example with a slightly different card structure. To begin, I'm going to create a new section element here inside our main element and below our CTA section. So I'll create a section and give this one a class of team section. Inside it, I'll create a div using our cards container class from the previous example and inside the container I'll create another div with the classes card and team card. Inside my team card I'm going to add an image and I'm going to use a file that I have in my images directory called image1 for the alt text, I'll just put some dummy text in here saying uh, photograph of a person. Next, I'll add an h3 element with a heading of first last name, which is just a placeholder for someone's actual name. And then I'm going to copy and paste this whole paragraph here and put it below and just adjust it slightly so that it says it describes the person not the product or service. With our first card in place in this new section, let's move on to the CSS. I scroll down a bit here underneath my team section separator. I'll begin by targeting our team section class and give it some padding of three rem on the top and bottom and one rem on the left and right. Next, I'll target our team card class and set the background color to dark gray using my hex code down here. And I'll set the color, the text color, to light gray. Next, I'll target the image by first targeting the team card class followed by a space and then targeting the image that belongs to that class. 
I want to reduce my image size by giving it a max width of 175 pixels. Technically, it would be better to crop the image files to the correct size before using them on your website, but I'm going to do it the wrong way here just to show you what not to do. If we have a quick look in the browser, we can see that our second card is beginning to take shape. Next, I'm going to make the image circular rather than square by giving it a border radius value of 50%. I'll also give it a border of 2 pixels solid and use my black colour from my hex codes here. Let's also apply some margin to the bottom of our image to separate it from the heading below. So we'll give it a margin bottom of 1 rem. At this point, we could consider our new card layout finished. However, I want to adjust the position of the image further to have it overlap the top edge of the card. To do this, I'm going to use negative margins to pull the image over the top edge. So let's add in here, below our margin bottom, a margin top value of negative 3 rem. As we can see, our image has been pulled up and is now overlapping the top edge of the card, which gives it a slightly updated look. To wrap up this video, I'm going to copy and paste our team card two more times, so we've got three of them now. And I'm going to update the images in each to image 2 and image 3. Because of our layout work earlier on the cards container and cards class, which we did up here in our CSS, we don't need to do anything else to make our new card layout responsive. These reusable classes have allowed us to create a brand new card layout and maintain the same responsive behavior and structure as before. As I reduce the width of the browser, our cards in both sections begin to wrap down onto new rows, and as I hover over the cards, they have the same hover state as in the previous example. I think that just about covers the basics of creating simple responsive card layouts with CSS Flexbox. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.